if we keep ignoring it, that wave of grief is going to come over us when we least expect it. And we won't be well prepared. Today we're going to be talking about a difficult topic that many people do present in the counseling office, and that's grief and grieving. Grief and grieving means so much to so many different people. It impacts our lives in so many different ways. We can be grieving something as simple as the loss of something that's dear to us. Maybe we lost our earring and we kind of grieve that because we miss it. We wish we had it. That's kind of insignificant in our lives. Some of us have experienced really traumatic losses. Others of us, just the day-to-day -day things that we grieve that we no longer have or we maybe have gone from our lives. Um, maybe the loss of a job will grieve that. Maybe the our children growing up, leaving home, the empty nest syndrome. Many parents joke about being happy about that, but we often have mixed feelings and there is that sense of grief that our children are growing up and are changing our stage of development for all of us. Oftentimes people will say, well, they should just get over it. The time is up. I mean, how long are they going to spend in that? It's important for us to know the distinction between grief and mourning. Grief is the internal feeling that we have about the loss. And mourning is that period where we are expressing it um, to the world. And so we express our grief in many different ways. And it would be wise for us to be more patient with people as they're progressing through their grief and to be more patient with ourselves as we are working through a major period of grief in our life. Elizabeth Kubler-Ross is probably the most famous author and researcher around that topic of grief and grieving and she came up with some stages that most people are fairly familiar with and you'll hear people talk about the stages of grief well I've been through the stages but you know we don't really go through the stages one by one by one and I don't think Kubler-Gross intended us to look at it that way there's new research out um, Strobes and Strobe are researching grief and grieving and they've come out with some different things they call phases and that we can experience all of the stages of grief all at once and and that is quite true so when we think of those stages that uh, Kubler-Ross first identified this first is the denial um, and again it may not be the thing that happens first but there's denial we, do, we can't believe it actually happened. How could that happen to us? Are we never going to see that person again? So there's this denial, it can't be true. Then there's the bargaining. There's bargaining in it. Oh, no, if, if only, maybe if I, if I do this, then I won't have to grieve or I can have that back or it, it, it won't be happening. And that happens more when we have like what we call anticipatory grief where we get a bad diagnosis um, and we think that we're going to lose a loved one or we're going to lose our life or we're going to lose something that we value. We go into this bargaining mode, okay. And some of us bargain with God, some of us bargain with the universe, but we say, well, I'll do this, I'll eat better. I will never lie. I will never cheat again. All these things we bargain, we say. We'll, we'll never do it and then it'll be okay. We won't have to grieve that thing. There's also anger and anger is a normal part of grief. We show anger in many different ways. Some people show anger in an expressive way where they are, they will shout and yell and stomp and slam doors and break things. Other people's anger can be expressed in tears and it's normal for us to be angry. We can be angry at the person that is gone like how could they leave us they didn't we know logically and our, our logical thought knows they didn't mean to or there were other things going on for them that was there's some reason but our brain goes to there there and we think the anger surfaces and it's a very very normal thing some people will get very depressed too, which is another one of the phases that we can go through. Depression, we don't feel like eating, we don't want to get up, 
we don't want to face the rest of the world it's very normal for us to have that kind of feeling when we are in the stages of grief and then finally there's the acceptance piece and we go Whew, we made it to acceptance. I can talk about my loved one now. I can go forward. I can laugh. I can engage with other people. And I made it. I'm in acceptance now. But then what often happens is a wave comes over us. So we remember that even though we may have gotten to that acceptance stage, it's quite normal for us to go back to one of the other phases, another stage in grief. I can share personal experience. When my father died, I thought I had made it through all the stages. I'm fine. I'm ready. I'm back at work. I go into the staff room. Someone says to me, I'm so sorry to hear about your father. All of a sudden, the wave hit me and I'm in a little puddle of tears. So it is normal and it's natural. And we need to be patient and realize that working through grief takes time. And just when we think we've got it all together and we're ready to move on with our life, then that other wave can hit us. Those of us that have been through grief will know that there are certain things that often trigger us, like dates, maybe a birthday of a loved one is coming up, or the time of year that they first became ill, or those kinds of things will come and hit us and we, we feel low. Sometimes it's an unconscious thing too. Maybe we get to the age where our parent was when they passed and all of a sudden we're getting really irritable and angry quickly and all those things. We are experiencing what is anticipatory grief. We're thinking about what might it be like. Maybe my life is coming to an end. So we want to be conscious of the fact that we may have some unconscious triggers in our brain that will give us those feelings. We can tease them apart and go, oh yes, my daughter's getting to the age that I was when my parent died. My son is getting to the stage when his cousin died. Well, you know, we can get those triggers and we don't even realize what's going on. But our body's amazing. Our mind is amazing. It tells us something's not quite not right. And we want to go back and figure out how can we deal with this. People always talk about moving on and getting over it and I don't know why they can't just get over it. Some of that comes from watching someone we love hurt when we see somebody that's grieving and we want to support them and we don't know how and so getting over it is really a misnomer. We never get over the loss of someone that we really loved. We learn to work through it and we learn to establish a new reality around our life without that person. And so getting over it, we don't want to get over it. That belittles the relationship that we had with that person. It makes their life less significant. So no, we're not trying to get over our grief. We're trying to work through it so that we can move on and be comfortable in the new reality that we have without that person. We want to be able to remember them and the peace that they had in our life, but getting over it, that's not a goal. Um, Well-meaning friends will often come in and try and distract us. They'll come and say, okay, come on, let's go out, let's go for a coffee, let's go out for dinner, and they try to distract us. That may be okay for some people. They might be ready for that. And if we are isolating ourselves for too long, that can be helpful. But timing is really important. And we have to be careful that we're doing these things that are at the right time for that person that is grieving. You know, biblically, Job, if you know the story of Job, he had the right to be mourning. He lost everything. He lost his family. He lost his wealth. He lost his health. And he was sitting in a 
puddle basically of tears. His friends didn't come in and say, hey, let's go, let's have some fun. They just sat with him and they were there for him. And I think that's something that we can do for a person that's grieving. Just be there for them. Do what they need us, take our direction from them, and rather than putting our wants on them. And it is well-meaning. We want them to heal. We want to have our friend back the way they were. But giving them that time to heal and understanding and being patient with them as they process their grief can be exactly what they need. Another suggestion that we like to make for people is when we're ready, move towards grief. Rather than avoiding it, um, small distractions can be helpful. You know, maybe doing something that we really enjoy, pampering ourselves, those kinds of things can be helpful. They're little distractions. However, if we rely too heavily on those distractions, then we're not able to work through our grief. So when we're ready, and there's nothing wrong with those, that self-care, that's so very, very important. Build that in to bolster yourself so that you're ready to move towards the grief. And I kind of think of it like when I'm kayaking. Um, if I'm kayaking and I'm not aware of the waves around me, I can easily get toppled over or swamped. So what we do when we're kayaking is we look for the wave and we try to cut through the wave rather than have it hit us sideways, blindside us so to speak, and cause some damage or have our kayak toppled over or swamped. So watch for those waves of grief. Be aware of what things might be triggering us and use our breathing, use our relaxation techniques. If we're in a situation where we want to manage our emotions around our grief, we have those strategies around that can keep us in a calmer state. It's all right to cry. Tears have, to have released toxins. And so it is good for our bodies to allow ourselves to cry. There's a really great resource that we often suggest for people, the Mourner's Bill of Rights. It helps people to understand what their friends might be going through when they're grieving. It helps validate how we feel when we're going through the process of grief. A really valuable resource. So you'll find the link to that resource in the description below. If you like this video, please do hit subscribe. We're making these videos to help people improve along their journey of mental fitness. Please feel free to leave us a comment. Maybe it'll spark an additional video or we can send you additional resources that will help you through that or to support someone that you know. Thanks for watching and keep improving your mental fitness. Take care out there.